Hi, after watching this video, please choose a similar subject to paint and just follow the steps that I take to guide you through your painting process. This video shows you the steps that I take working on my paintings. This is a colored pencil painting demonstration. I usually work on colored paper as it speeds up the process and makes the colors look a lot brighter and vibrant. I always choose smooth paper that doesn't have a lot of texture in it. I also favor Prismacolor Premier colored pencils. Here I use the picture that I took on the island of Burana in Italy. I often compose with my digital camera and take the best shot to become a prototype for my artwork. Prismacolor Premier colored pencils have a lot of pigment on them and so you can make a much brighter drawing. They come in different boxes. I have 36 pencils in my box. Now I start drawing with a graphite 2HB pencil. I make faint lines only, because when I begin coloring, graphite lines will show up in light areas of my drawing. In the picture, I look for best well-balanced composition, good color range, complexity of the image and overall beauty of the piece. I make a final drawing on either colored or white paper. Here I use medium tone light gray color. After finishing up the outline drawing, I tap harsh lines with a kneaded eraser and start drawing with sharp point of colored pencil. An accurate graphite line is a, the most important step that you make to have a successful drawing. When I work on the outlines, I'm constantly thinking of improving the composition. The graphite outline must stay very light. It is of vital importance to keep it light in the light areas of the drawing. All those graphite lines are going to show through when you draw with white or light yellow or peachy color. Sometimes I don't even use the graphite but stick to light colored pencil and create outlines with it. I begin drawing in colored pencil. I take dark cherry and make the line with the ruler. I am also using a ruler as a tool that helps me to create straight lines. I also use the color wheel that helps me to decide on color relationships. I often make dark outlines because it's important not to lose the clarity of the forms. Here you can see colored outlines. I use dark cherry and light cerulean blue for the lighter parts. Now I begin shading the window blinds. I use a mix of two colors, dark cherry and indigo blue for the darker parts and light cerulean blue for the highlights. Here I add ultramarine. When I draw I try to do a lot of cross hatching to cancel out the lines. It also helps me to get rid of any texture that comes forward. Now I'm working on the window and I'm using brownish colors for that. Once again I'm making an outline using my ruler and a very sharp pencil of dark brown. I'm also adding some red into it. Now I'm working on the reflections in the window and I'm using peach and canary yellow for that. I'm pushing my lighter pencils a little bit harder to get more color out of them. When I draw the outline of the tree as a reflection in a window, I'm trying to make sure that the branches look curvy and overlap. I'm using the indigo blue for the shadowy parts of the tree and I'm shading the entire tree in one color. I use goldenrod for the lighter parts of the branch. This color is in the family of browns, but it has a very natural yellowish tint to it. I 
I begin to fill in the space in between the branches. I use a variety of blues, including light aquamarine. It's okay to overlap colors, so don't be afraid to spill over the edge. It's important not to leave empty area around the tree. So I do a little bit of overlapping on purpose. I continue filling in the first layer of the sky using light cerulean blue on top of the aquamarine. I can also add cloud blue or even white in the areas that are the lightest in the sky. As you can see, I always use a mix of at least two colors to create the form. I mix and crosshatch colors to get the same color mix on both sides of the branches. Then I go back to the tree trunk and use the golden rod to create the middle tones. I then switch to Tuscan Red to do the darker parts of the tree trunk. I also add a little bit of grass green over it. Here I have the first layer of the background finished. I am using a variety of colors that I notice in the picture and then I exaggerate them. The more colors I have in my painting, the better it looks. It's impossible to mix colored pencils into muddy gray. That's why I'm not afraid using lots of color. Now I'm working on each flower and each green leaf. Basically I draw from start to finish. I make an outline with indigo blue. The outline follows the shape of the flower. I then begin coloring the lightest parts of the flower. I use canary yellow and fill in the center of the flower. I then add goldenrod to make a few color transitions. Then I switch to violet and color the leaves behind the center of the flower. some indigo blue and violet into the mix. I'm also varying the pencil pressure so some of the areas need to stay a little bit lighter while other areas need to get darker. I'm also blending the outer edge of the petal with the background because I don't want it to look like a cutout. I'm adding some light cerulean blue on top of these colors. To unify the color of the flower a little bit more, I use the same light cerulean blue on top of the yellowish color. I pick my crimson red to create the outline for the leaves. Red is the opposite of green on the color wheel. That's why reddish color is present in many of the leaves. Here I'm just copying the shape of the leaf from the picture that I have. And I'm using a variety of greens to fill in the form. Some 
white in the lightest areas of the greens. Then I work on the middle tones with darker greens. I often use grass green, olive green and dark green. Here I'm filling in the space with the olive green. As usual I overlap colors and so I add the apple green on top of the olive green. I create a richer surface by mixing lots of different colors. To lighten up the form I use white. I'm trying to make each petal different in value. So one petal is darker than the others. Here I continue working on greens and follow the same steps. I outline the form first and then I fill in the middle tones and the highlights. I add touches of darker colors and I also lighten up the form where it's needed. To blend the surface more in the lighter parts of the drawing, I often use colorless blender. This blender looks exactly like the pencil itself, but it has grayish center. I draw with it over my finished layer. It makes it smoother and brighter. I fill in the background space around the leaves because the background color affects what I'm doing in the foreground. I use a mix of indigo blue and olive green. I continue working on other leaves. If the entire leaf is in the shadow, I fill in the entire leaf with one color and then I add more colors to it. It's also important to recreate the shadow under each leaf and each petal and each flower. It is not going to look realistic if you leave shadows behind. cloud blue to lighten up the surface in these leaves. And I switch to apple green to warm up the area in this leaf. I use dark green to create the lines and define the form. I am drawing out the shapes of the leaves in the flower using a single color pencil and then I start shaping them. I'm constantly looking at my photo. 
trying to match not only the color but also the values in my drawing. How light is the leaf? How dark is the leaf? How dark is the shadow? These are the questions that I ask myself. Where is the highlight? What color is it? How warm is the background? How cool is the flower? Is it in the shadow or the sunlight? I'm working on a reddish flower, so I'm using a variety of reds this time. Crimson red is a very dark color that can be laid with Tuscan red to create the shadowy parts of the flower. I also add the same dark reds into the greens at the bottom part of the flower. I add some yellow into the petals to create lighter tones. That's how my drawing looks when the first layer is finished. It already looks quite realistic from the distance, however, it lacks the polished look and some details if you look at it up close. To make the surface look nice and smooth, I oftentimes use either the mineral spirit or the turpanoid. The turpanoid smells a lot less. I also use a very small brush for this purpose only, so I never use it in any other kind of painting like watercolor or oil paint. This is strictly reserved for the burnishing process. And burnishing means polishing the surface to its complete smoothness. I dip the brush into the liquid and start painting over my colored pencil drawing. This way I not only blend the surface but also make it a lot brighter. I'm getting rid of any texture that I have in my first layer. Using the same technique in the entire picture. Here you can see me working on the flower. Burnishing is a great tool to get rid of any texture. However, I'm careful about dragging dark color into my highlight. That's why I'm painting very attentively. Blending the lights with the mineral spirits doesn't work the same way as blending the darks with it. So I use colorless blender in the lighter parts of my drawing and I use turpanoid the darker areas of my drawing. Here you can see a clear difference between the two parts of the drawing. The right side of the drawing is burnished with the turpanoid and the left side is left free of any burnishing. The left side shows a lot of texture and roughness of the surface. After finishing up the burnishing process in the entire picture, my drawing looks a lot brighter and smoother. All I need to do now is to add some color variation and work on fine details. Here I'm adding light cerulean blue over the first layer. darker parts. I keep adding more colors into the browns and I burnish the surface completely so it doesn't show any texture.
Sometimes I use torpanoid in my second and third layers. I have a lot of texture in the sky and I'm trying to get rid of it by using more light cerulean blue on top of the previously applied colors. I keep my pencil very sharp and do a lot of cross hatching. I'm switching between pencils back and forth, working on each branch. At this point I'm painting each branch from start to finish. I use the ruler to make a straight line. Then I place a shadow coloring right next to that line. Here you can see me working on the shadows that create this three-dimensional illusion. I use a variety of yellows and white to fill in the space in the background. And the background represents the yellow wall behind the flowers. I also add a little bit of lime peel, which is a very light cream color to add some variation into the yellows. After that I can burnish the surface with the colorless blender. I outline the flower box with a dark pencil and then I start filling in the darks using the same pencil. Here I have dark cherry. Then I add more red and orange into the box. The flower box is almost of a single value, but I'm trying to create subtle transitions between the shadowy parts of it and the lighter parts of the box. I'm also getting rid of any texture I still see in my painting. I go 
back to my flowers and add final details and lighten up the surface if it's needed. I make one side darker and the other side lighter to tone it more in space. I switch to mulberry and go across the darker petals. I add light soil and blue and white into red flowers. Here's the final piece. It's always so exciting to see it finished. It's been many hours of work. Don't forget to use the fixative. Please spray it outside. The fixative will protect your painting from the light and moisture. Thanks for downloading my video. Please visit my website www.vilankosart.com to see new videos, books, uh, tips and techniques on colored pencil painting. Um, new work is available as well. Um, thank you. Bye-bye.